Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, my name is Lindsay Funtick, and I am the coordinator of volunteer ministries at Ashland First United Methodist Church. And every Thursday, <clears throat> excuse me, every Thursday, I hop on here to share some of my devotional thoughts and a little bit about what the Lord has been teaching me this week. So welcome. Glad you're here. Um, and this week, uh, it kind of ties into everything that we have been talking about during the month of January at AFUMC. So as a way of kind of exploring our spiritual gifts, um, we are hosting the month of gifts. And so this month, we as a congregation have taken uh, the spiritual gifts inventory set forth by the United Methodist Church. Uh, it's a really good one. If you want to take a test, look it up. And we have had a workshop, we've had breakout sessions, um, and now we're currently working on thinking about setting short-term and long-term goals for putting our spiritual gifts into practice. So I have really loved leading our faith family through this. Um, if you've had any amount of conversation with me about it, uh, you see that I get really giddy talking about just seeing people discovering their gifts. Uh, I think that uh, once again, I will say we are not meant to walk the walk of discipleship alone. And so I really enjoy discovering things together. So uh, if you have not taken that test yet, it is not too late. So uh, let me know if you have any thoughts or questions. Before I begin, I have to give that little, little note. Um, but today, I, because I've been thinking about spiritual gifts so much, uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to talk a little bit about my thoughts on it. So uh, as I've gone through this month of gifts, um, it's kind of become clear that um, we don't know a ton about spiritual gifts, um, not just within AFUMC, but I think the church more broadly. Um, I know people who have not heard of them. I know people who have taken tests and then not known what to do with them. Um, there's kind of all level of understanding, misunderstanding, um, and application that may or may not be there. So today I thought I would just share one of the passages that I've been kind of sitting with as I've been thinking about spiritual gifts. And it definitely is, um, one, one video is not enough to be able to talk about all of this. So again, I want to encourage conversation. Come by every Wednesday. I have spiritual gifts office hours from one to five. Let's talk about this. Let's pray about it together. So this is just one passage. It's Romans 12, three through eight. And I really like this one because it kind of, it's, it gets me thinking about what a congregation, what a faith family who is committed to their spiritual gifts looks like. So let's dive in. I'm reading from the NIV. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So as I said, this really kind of gets my, gets my mind whirling around what a faith family who commits to this passage and to the reality that Paul lays out for us in this Romans um, Romans passage that uh, what that congregation could look like. So the first thing that I notice is that this congregation, this faith family is marked by humility and self-reflection. I really like that as he uh, begins to dive into talking about the necessity of all of the gifts, um, he starts out with saying, don't think about yourself too highly, <laughs> uh, to think about yourself with sober judgment. And I think that one thing I've discovered as we've dove into spiritual gifts and just in my own life, it's good to know that you are gifted. Each and every one of us is gifted. The Holy Spirit has given us those gifts so that we might build up the body and that we might reach maturity in Christ likeness. 
but we are not there yet. Uh, we are all on the same journey. Um, none of us have arrived. So while we celebrate where we are, we also cultivate where we want to be. And I really appreciate that uh, Paul exhorts the people to view themselves with sober judgment. And I think that when this faith family, when the members look into uh, the mirror, that they are able to both celebrate the fact that, yes, I am gifted, um, but also know that they're still on the way and to look at themselves realistically um, without too much or too little confidence. Uh, and along with that, they're able to look to the left and the right and know that no person uh, on either side of you in the pew is better or worse than you. Uh, you're all vital members. So as uh, we are thinking about our own individual gifts, I really appreciate that he talks about sober judgment. Think about yourselves realistically. And that is a beautiful thing and a convicting thing. So that's kind of the first thing that I notice about what this congregation, what this uh, kind of, I'll say the perfect faith family might look like. I don't know. Um, so next is that this faith, faith family embraces its diversity. So as you look into the scripture that talks about spiritual gifts, there is a lot of language about one body, many members. And that is true of this passage as well. So as me, Lindsay, walking through my, my daily life, I can appreciate um, my eyes because it helps me to see the beautiful sunshine that's outside today, and it's a place for me to put sparkly eyeshadow. And so those are things that outwardly I'm like, yes, I appreciate my eyes. Um, but I don't often think about how, oh, I really appreciate my liver. Uh, my liver is just going about doing its job. Um, it's not something that I, I celebrate as much as I should, but my eyeballs and my liver are just as vital to my walking through this world in a healthy and whole way. And so it goes with faith families and different types of spiritual giftings is that we are each and every one of us vital. So some of us might be you know, gifted leaders, or some of us might be gifted in administration, and both are so necessary to a whole functioning, healthy uh, congregation, healthy um, manifestation of the body of Christ, uh, this side of paradise. So I think that when I, when I envision this faith family that Paul is kind of describing, or that would have these attributes that Paul is describing, I see a group of people who fully recognize that they need each other, uh, that none of us are the full package. No one puzzle piece has the whole picture on it. And it is only when we are together and leaning against each other that we are able to fully function as we should. And so no matter what uh, body part you might be, um, you are necessary. And so this faith family as, that we are envisioning today um, recognizes that and leans into that. And finally, I see that this faith family knows their gifts and uses them. And so they own them. Um, this is one of the main reasons why I felt led to do the month of gifts is because I think that um, to know our gifts, to understand them, embrace them and apply them is to really live a, a rich existence um, in the way that the Lord intended for us. And so uh, in this faith family, no matter what your gift might be, uh, these people wield them with confidence, I will say. So um, if, you, if you have the gift of prophecy, you prophesy. If you lead, you do so with gumption and with dedication. Um, the teachers, the encouragers, no matter what kind of gift you have or gifts, um, you in, in this kind of ideal situation, you're dedicated to using those gifts and to doing so with confidence. Again, not looking at ourselves as more or less than anyone else, but to just live into the reality of how the Lord created you and how the Spirit gifted you. And so, like I said, that is one reason we are doing the month of gifts is because I want to encourage us to live into our giftedness and to not be shy about it. To speak personally, I spent a lot of years afraid to own my gifts. Um, but after a lot of processing, I'm like, no, I'm going to wield my gifts. I'm going to use them and I'm going to live into the reality that the Lord has crafted for me. So this faith family knows their gifts 
and they use them. So, uh, as I'm kind of pondering the scripture and as I'm thinking about devotional thoughts for this week, my big question is, how can we make our faith, faith families look like this one? What, how can we move in the direction of using our spiritual gifts in a way that's healthy, that's glorifying, um, and that's celebratory of all the Lord wants to do through us? Uh, and I think that the em- answer is simple, but not easy. Uh, and that is just to learn about embrace and put our spiritual gifts into practice. So uh, not it's not enough to necessarily know what our gifts are. Um, we want to see them played out in the kingdom of God here as it is in heaven. Um, we want to support each other as we do so. Because like I said, I need my eyelids for eyeshadow and I need my liver. So these are things that all pieces are vital and I celebrate both pieces of my body. Um, And we must be confident in the fact that the Lord has moved, that God has gifted us. The Holy Spirit has moved and is moving among us. So part of embracing that is embracing our gifts. And I really believe that um, when all members of a body are healthy and functioning and supporting one another, uh, then the whole being is alive. So with that, friends, Uh, I just encourage you to continue to explore your spiritual gifts. Um, I am here as a resource for you. I know that um, Pastor Alan, just come talk to us. Uh, We're excited to explore this with you. And it doesn't end with the month of gifts. Um, We now know what our gifts are. We um, have begun to think about what it means to put things into practice. But this continues on through our whole walks of discipleship. So I encourage you in that. And friends, I affirm you in your gifts. Keep going, keep growing, and trust the Lord. So with that, First United Methodist, I love you and I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you as always. I hope you enjoy the sunshine. It's so life-giving and um, have a good rest of your week. I'm looking forward to seeing you all very soon.